The theory that describes what goes wrong in the frontal cortex during addiction was developed by Dr. Peter Calavas at the Medical University of South Carolina and Dr. Nora Volkoff, the director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse. They recognize that dopamine is important in the early stages of addiction. But the final common pathway in addiction is the glutamate neurons projecting back down from the frontal cortex. Calavas and Volkoff's research is based on an important new tool that has only recently become available to neuroscience, the technology of brain scans. Brain scans are essentially photographs of the brain in action. Now what these brain scans say exactly is still controversial, but Calavas and Volkoff have found abnormal activity in the brain scans of addicts in two important areas of the cortex, the orbitofrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate cortex. These areas are critical for emotional attachment and decision making. Kalavas and Volkov believe that the abnormal activity here is the basis of the overwhelming importance the brain gives to drugs and the uncontrollable urge it feels to seek them. In addiction, the normal top-down control of the cortex over the midbrain simply fails. The addict's prior commitment to quit, their memory of what happened the last time they drank or used drugs, the love they feel for their family, the knowledge of the punishment they know awaits them if they relapse, when the cortex fails, these things are invisible to the addict. Kalavas and Volkov call this brain state hypofrontality. What was once a healthy, functional, decision-making frontal cortex is reduced to a shadow of its former self. Overactivity in some areas of the brain and in other areas, desolation. This is what lies behind the denial, the personality changes, the breathtakingly impaired decision-making in combination with the tragic loss of insight that characterize end-stage addiction. Addiction begins as a disorder of genes and pleasure, but it ends as a disorder of choice. Hypofrontality gives the addicted brain a powerful tool to protect the connection of the drug to survival, and that tool is called craving. Craving is a difficult concept. We all use the word craving. When people say they crave chocolate, what they mean is they really want chocolate a lot. It's important to understand that's not what the addict means when they say they crave. Craving is an intense, emotional, obsessional experience. The addict wants to think about other things. Their brain is constantly bringing them back to the drug. They are up in the middle of the night. They can't sleep. Their pulse is at 120. They're thinking over and over again, just one more time. That's craving. And make no mistake, that is genuine suffering. And I think it's the presence of craving that defeats that choice argument. You remember the choice argument. Addiction is not a disease because the addict can quit any time he wants. Go ahead, put alcohol in front of the alcoholic, and when he reaches for it, you point a gun at his head, and he will choose not to drink. And that's true. With a gun to his head, the addict can, in that moment, choose not to drink. But even though the addict isn't drinking or using, he's still craving. He doesn't have the choice not to crave. Once that connection of the drug to survival has been carved into the brain, you don't actually have to have drug use anymore for the disease process of addiction to be active. The choice argument fails because it measures addiction by the addict's behavior. In doing so, it misses the most important feature of addiction to the addict, the craving. The other thing the choice argument doesn't quite get is that if you put alcohol in front of an alcoholic and a gun to his head, he doesn't think, oh, I better not drink or I'll get shot in the head. No. What he thinks sounds more like this. I wonder if he'll really shoot me. I wonder if he's even got bullets in that gun. Maybe his finger will slip off the trigger. I wonder if I can get that alcohol into my brain before the bullet comes crashing through my skull. That's craving. And that experience is as miserable as it is involuntary. <laughs>